Hi guys, thanks for joining me today on Making with Marilyn. On today's video, I'm going to be adding a Christmas design to this raglan t-shirt that I got at Joann's recently. It was on sale for $4.79, I believe, and then I had another 20% off, and so I got this shirt for somewhere around $4. Now, for so. today's project, I'll be using my computer and Cricut Design Space. I'll be using my Cricut Maker. I'll be using my Easy Press 2 that you can see in the background. And then I'm going to use black heat transfer vinyl. I'm going to use white glitter heat transfer vinyl. I have a ruler so I can place my design on my shirt. Scissors, my weeding tool, my brayer. I'll use my small Easy Press mat. And I think that's it. If I forgot something, I'll type it in the bottom of this video so that you can see anything else you might need. Now, if you like my video or find anything in it helpful or inspiring, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you'd like to see what I'll be working on in the future, hit the subscribe button. If you also click the bell, you can select to be notified of future uploads. Now, let me get the camera changed, put on some comfy clothes to work in, and let's get crafting. Now before I show you my design space screen, I want to show you this website. I am not endorsed by this website. I have no relationship with this website other than I signed up to be a member of it or to have access to it, but I'm not receiving anything for this plug. I just think this is a great website. It's designbundles.com and I get emails from them at least once a week it seems like on sales that they're having. And so look at this, the Christmas Mega Craft Bundle. There's a ton of things in this. It's only $19. This pillow down here, the North Pole Express, that's adorable I think. It's $1.50. Now the only thing that I think I've ever purchased from this site is once in a while they'll have a dollar font sale so you can get a font for a dollar and I have purchased I would say maybe three fonts from them but then also once in a while they'll send you some free designs that you can download and that you can use. So the design that I'm going to use today is one that I downloaded from Design Bundles for free. Okay, so here's Cricut Design Space. This is my design that I'm gonna put on my daughter's shirt. Sparkle like a snowflake. And the shirt already is pretty colorful. It's red sleeves and it has a gray background where the design will go. And I want the design to show up really well. So I'm just using a black heat transfer vinyl for the main part of the design. And then on the snowflake, I'm actually going to use a white glitter vinyl. Now, my design, the total design is seven and a half inches wide and a little over five inches tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Make It. Now, it's sorting my design into two mats. I have most of my design on the black mat, and then you'll cut your snowflake separately. I'm starting with my black mat, so I select my black mat down here. Now I'm going to use just this everyday iron on setting. Now, before I cut this, I need to mirror it. I'll click Edit, Mirror On. For every heat transfer vinyl I've ever used, you have to have the mirror on. Now, with this snowflake, there's not a forward and a backward, so I wouldn't necessarily have to, but when I cut that one, I will also mirror it just so everything stays exactly the way I see it on the screen. So the next step is I need to make sure my fine point blade is in clamp B. It is not. The last thing that I made were some leather earrings. So when I get the camera turned around, I'll show you how to change that out, and we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and change out my blade to the correct blade. It told me that I needed to use my fine point blade in clamp B. I currently have my deep point blade in clamp B. I want to clean it off. Now, here's my fine point blade before I cut. I'm going to push the blade out, make sure it's cleaned off. Then I'll go ahead and put it in clamp B. Close that back up. For my black HTV, I am using Caesar Easy Weed Stretch. 
And what I like to do is put labels on all my materials so that I know how long to iron them, how long to preheat, what temperature to iron them, and whether they're hot or cold peel. So I'll refer back to that later in the video. Okay, so I'm just going to turn my HTV with the straight side up and you want to place it with the shiny side down. That's the carrier sheet. If you cannot tell which is the carrier sheet and which is the vinyl, in this case they do look similar. I'm just going to poke, okay, poke through the edge. I know that is the vinyl. Now I want to make sure that when I cut, I don't have anything that's going to cut where I poke that hole. All right. So... Lace this down carefully. Go ahead and brayer it down to my standard grip mat, at least as far as the cut will be. My Cricut Easy Press is ready for me to load my material. So all I have to do is click the load button here. And now it's ready for me to cut it. Okay, I'll go ahead and unload that. I like to turn my mat over and remove my mat from what I'm working with. I think you can keep your material flatter that way and keep your material from buckling. Now I want to waste as little vinyl as possible, so I'm going to cut out around my design. Oops. Now heat transfer vinyl typically weeds very, very easily. So I'm just going to pick up a corner. And start peeling it off. For most heat transfer vinyls, you really just don't have to be super careful with it. Now, I need to go back and make sure I get out everything that needs to be removed. Okay, so I think I'm done, but what I like to do is turn it over the way you're going to see it on the shirt and make sure you didn't miss something or make sure that a little piece of the heat transfer vinyl didn't fall onto one of the parts of the transfer sheet that you don't want it. In this case, it looks very good. Now, while I was cutting this, I realized I might have a scrap in my drawer, and I do. Now, it's not a whole lot bigger than the, the O that's the snowflake, but I'm gonna try to get by with, using, with just using this little scrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my white mat, or in my case, it's gray. And I wanna make sure that I mirror that also. Like I said earlier, it's really not imperative because it is not a letter or something that really needs to be front or back. But since the rest of my design is mirrored, I want to go ahead and mirror it. I'm 
Again, I'm going to place it carrier side down. And on glitter vinyl, that's usually pretty easy to tell because the back side is often, but not always, a more solid color. And the front side is very glittery. And so the front side goes down. Now this is a real small piece, so I want to brayer it down really well. There's less surface space to stick to my mat. And so it could slide around more easily than when you're using a big piece. Again, I just want to make sure there's nothing on my blade that hinders the cut, and there's not. Now it doesn't look like it's sticking down super well because my mat's pretty well used. So you can probably see that it's wanting to come up there. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down with some tape. Okay, so I want to try to tape on the vinyl in an area where it's not going to be cut. So I'm going to stay really, really close to this edge. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on the top. Again, staying away from where I think the cut will happen. And then lastly, I'm just going to put a little bit on this far right side. Okay, so let's see what we get. Okay, let's see how that did. Now this is such a little piece that I can get it off without turning my mat over, without buckling the vinyl. And I want to go ahead and get my cover back on my mat so that dust and debris doesn't get on it. Okay, so again, we just start at a corner, poke through the vinyl. This glitter vinyl is a little bit thicker, so it's a little bit harder to poke through. Now, if something starts to come up from your carrier sheet, just hold it down while you pull the rest. Okay, so that came out just fine. And so I will press my shirt in two layers. I'm going to actually press the snowflake first because it takes higher heat for a little bit longer. And then I'll press the black layer on. And so let me get things cleaned up, moved around, and I'll show you how that gets done. 
Now the first vinyl that I'm going to put on my shirt is the Glitter HTV. My shirt needs to be preheated for two to three seconds and then I press at 320 for 15 to 20 seconds and it is a hot peel. And so I want to put this on first because 320 is more than what you need or should use on the black non-glitter HTV. So let me go ahead and get my Easy Press 2 turned on. Last time I used it I was at 385 so I want to decrease that to 320. And then this should be ironed on for 15 to 20 seconds. Since it is going to get a second ironing with the other vinyl, I'm going to go for the 15 seconds. So I will just fast forward through this heating up. And then we'll get started. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the side seams, or where there would be side seams if there were seams, this is seamless on the side, is straight. Sometimes you know they get kind of cocked. And get my heat press mat under it, under the shirt. Now, to know where to put my snowflake, since I'm doing my snowflake first, I really need to know where to put the rest of my design. And so I'm going to just gently lay it on there. I'm not going to press down or anything. I'm not going to put it on there after I preheat. I don't want it to accidentally start sticking. And I want my design to start about three inches down from the collar. Okay, I think that looks good. Now, if the tag's in the center, you can try to center your design under it, but what I like to do is kind of measure from the side of the design. So I'm gonna start at the middle of this E, and it's about three inches to that edge. So I need to stay about the same level that I was, which was about right here, going across. So there's three inches, and it ends short of the edge. So. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. Okay, I think that looks good. I'm going to hold it up so that I can see it better. So give me just a minute. Okay, so I'm going to go with that. Now, what I need to do is peel my design up a little bit and place my snowflake. You know, and actually, I guess what I could do is hold it off the shirt and just put it under the letters where I think it looks good. That'd probably be easier, make more sense. And I'm fine with the bottom of it being about even with the bottom of the letters and this extending up a little bit. I actually think I prefer that. Nope, no, I don't. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I want to get where the snowflake is on my mat nicely. Now, a couple things. You're supposed to preheat it to get any of the moisture out. So I'm going to go ahead and preheat just for a few seconds. I think it said two or three seconds. Okay, now I don't want my black vinyl really falling down too much on my shirt, even though it's really not very hot. I don't think it's going to stick. I'm going to set my finger down here, 
And then I'm just going to peel the black off and leave the white snowflake where it is. I'm just going to set something on that to hold it up there. My white HTV I'm doing for 15 seconds at 320. And remember, this was a hot peel, so I want to go ahead and peel that off. Now I'm going to give it just a minute to cool off slightly so that I will be able to adjust my black vinyl if I need to. Now, with the black HTV, you're supposed to preheat for two to three seconds, and it's just at 305 for 10 to 15 seconds. So I don't think you can see this. I'm going to move my temperature down to 305, and I'm going to move my time down to 10 seconds. I want to do it the least amount of time first, then I'll remove everything, and then I'll use a Teflon sheet, repress everything once, and I'll be done. I was able to get a preheat in this area, but not up in this area. So I'm going to hold this still in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and just preheat this area for two or three seconds. Again, that gets the moisture out. Okay, so my Easy Press 2 is down to 305. I'm going to go ahead and place that on the entire design for 10 seconds. And I'm putting a gentle pressure on it, nothing very strong whatsoever. Now, this black HTV says peel hot or cold, so I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and peel it off now. You saw that came up just a little bit there. So this time I'm going to go ahead and do the entire 15 seconds. But now that the vinyl is exposed, you cannot put your heat press directly on the vinyl. So I'm going to use this Teflon sheet. And this time I think I'll give it a little bit firmer of pressure. Now what I like to do is I like to look and see if I can see the texture through the shirt. I'm sorry, if I can see the texture through the HTV. If you can see the texture through it, it's adhered really well. And where it slightly came up when I was pulling the transfer sheet off is now adhered. I can't even feel the HTV on this shirt. It just pressed in it so nicely. So here's my final design. I think it turned out super, super cute, super inexpensive. And I think my daughter's going to just love this shirt. Now again, if you find anything in the video you like or that helped you out, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, leave them in the comments section. If you'd like to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell. That way you'll receive notifications when I upload a new video. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn. Bye-bye.